the uh, loyal audience that for some reason wants to follow my hike. <laughs> hike of an old man. I am packing up to leave the William Douglas Shelter stealth site. So I'm kind of about a half mile from that shelter. So getting ready to pack up is about quarter to seven. And I've got a, almost a six mile hike into Manchester Center, Vermont, where I will need to resupply. And I'm probably gonna have to get a hitch into town. I've been unsuccessful on two previous attempts in other town areas. Uh, but I think this town is about five miles away from the trailhead, so it's not like I'm going to walk it. So I need food, basically, um, you know, dinners and snacks and all that. The rest of the stuff I'm pretty good on, fuel, toilet paper, uh, all that stuff. I could use a shower and laundry, but I'm trying to get up to Rutland, Vermont, which I think is about 100 miles from here, to do a zero to take care of all that. So I just need a resupply to tide me over. Uh, to get me to Rutland. So I'm um, expecting about mid 70s today. And I'm not sure how much time that town is going to suck me into. Um, this may be a really short hiking day. You know, I'll get the six miles into town. And depending on when I get out of there, how long it takes me to hitch in, hitch out, it could be an eight mile day. Um, Bromley Mountain is uh, 3,200 feet elevation. And it's pretty popular to tent or camp on top of that mountain because of the views. So I could decide to stay there, just take a short day or move on. I think uh, the next shelter tent site is a, would make it a 16 mile day, but we'll see. I'm going to play it by ear, um, see how my body feels right now. Um, uh, I have more confidence in my body and hiking. So I think this is about where it, it starts to transition into more of a mental thing. So I have the body confidence now. I'm not sure what my body is going to be doing later on if I continue on. Um, because I'm losing muscle, my body's going undergoing a, kind of a transformation. Uh, the, you know, the body fat is kind of dropped off and and the muscles start. So I don't know what effect that's going to have down the road, but regardless, I think the mental game is going to start to kick in and the, gr the grind part of this. So um, anyway, I'm excited for a town visit today. I can't wait. I don't know what town food awaits me. I expect to roll in there maybe around 10 o'clock. So we'll see. Let's get on down the road. Onward! Okay, before I get really into this hike, I did mention yesterday that I do appreciate all the words of encouragement from the other side of the screen. Not something I expected. Um, so I do appreciate it. It does help the motivation, all the kind words. So I came up with a name and um, just to kind of entertain myself 
And since my name was derived from, well, you could say a tree. I don't, I'm not sure the deep history of it, but hickory was passed down from my great grandfather. So all you guys that are kind enough to show support, subscribe, all that, and Future Hickory, this is uh, this is being published on a platform called YouTube. I'm not sure if it's going to exist 10 or 20 years from now, but anyway, the uh, loyal audience that for some reason wants to follow my hike, <laughs> hike of an old man. Uh, so m my name came from a tree. All right, that's cool. So there are hickory nuts on a hickory tree. And I wasn't going to use that hickory nuts, you know, as, as the collective audience. But why not stick with something ab about a tree? Walnuts don't work. The pecan patrol, pecan platoon doesn't work. So I came up with acorn army. I know acorns are from another tree. But it just has a certain ring to it. So... I'm going to refer to you guys as the Acorn Army. How's that? Kind of cheesy, kind of corny, corny, acorny. But hey, why not? It's better than saying uh, y'all or use guys or something like that. So Acorn Army it is, unless I come up with something better. So Acorn Army, I love you. Onward.
Okay, short day today, 12.9 miles, and the biggest reason is I had to make a town stop in Manchester Center, which I did. I spent about three hours there, and then another half hour getting a ride to and from the trail, so three and a half hours. I got a lot done. Uh, I hit the Price Chopper grocery store for a quick resupply, which was great. Right across the street was a great bagel and coffee place called The Works, and it's really buggy here where I am. I am at Styles Peak. This is a stealth campsite. There is a view right up here, which I'll take you to. But uh, coffee and bagel hit the spot. And I walked down into downtown Manchester. Great, great place. I loved it. And I just happened to walk into the Mountain Goat Outfitters. It wasn't intentional. I just walked in. They had a shoe selection. I was having real troubles with my uh, my brand new shoes. They're about a week old. Ultra Lone Peaks. I am now in Solomon Odyssey shoes. This is not a gear recommendation. This is something I had to do. Uh, I've only been on them for a few miles, so the, I don't know how they're going to work out. Right now they feel good. But the Ultras were killing me, so I had to change them. And also, sock choice. Darn tough socks. Lifetime guarantee. If they have a hole, if you develop a hole in your darn tough socks, they have a trade-in program. So if the outfitter is a participating darn tough um, outlet, you can give them your socks with the hole in them, and they'll give you a pair on the spot, a brand new pair, which I got, which is cool. So darn tough, I will recommend them because not, not <laughs> I'm getting eaten up out here. Not too many companies do that for their customers. So awesome. I uh, also got some new and gingy toe liner socks. Uh, I had some holes in those. Of course, I had to pay for those. Um, so I walked out of there really happy. The, the shoes feel good on my feet right now. So that was awesome. Then I went across the street and had a big pizza. I had some carry out leftover pizza for dinner here, which I'm going to gobble down in just a few minutes. And all in all, a great experience. And my shuttle ride showed up right on time. Took me back to the trailhead. And I walked another, uh, I don't know, four miles or so. So it's about 6 o'clock right now, 5.30, 6 o'clock. And a beautiful view. My tent is just a few feet away. So I'm staying up here tonight, probably all by myself. And... Um, probably sit right here and have some coffee in the morning all that stuff was not the highlight of my day toward the end just uh at the start of the ascent of styles peak um there was a sign at the trailhead that there was some tra trail magic right in the adjacent parking lot which when i you know i, I rarely see trail magic here i walked over and the man's name that was hosting the Trail Magic, his name, trail name was Spineless Cougar. Um, he even had a rubber stamp, which I got. And he had two coolers full of refreshments, fruit, watermelon, bananas, Gatorade, uh, frosty root beer, <laughs> Cokes, uh, hand sanitizer, chairs to sit in. Great conversation with him. I just want to say thank you, Spineless Cougar. I really appreciate that. Seems like trail magic comes along. Of course, unexpected times. And usually right at the right time. So it just made for a great day. Um, and it's great to meet people like that. Um, just unconditional generosity. Uh, for the hiker community and I'm sure if people like Spineless Cougar didn't live near the AT he would find a way to extend his generosity in some other way to other people so um, just um, humbled by an experience where people are giving you things and offering you their help and support and Expect nothing in return. Um,
kind of reminds me of my mom. So anyway, thank you, Spineless Cougar. Good conversation. All right, Acorn Army, I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.